I'm glad you had a good business trip, honey. It sounds like it went really well. Yeah, I'm glad to be home. Is that a computer case? Yeah, it's the Define S from Fractal Design. It runs so quietly, I figured I'd put it there as a reminder that in this crazy, hectic world, silence really is golden. Is that the same computer case? Yeah, the Define S supports triple radiators, water cooling pumps, and reservoirs, so I figured I'd put one there just to remind myself to be flexible in life. Really? In the bathroom? Why? Well, yeah, I figured the toilet hasn't been working lately, and the Define S has such a spacious interior that I just thought- Oh my god! The Define S from Fractal Design is built for uncompromised custom water cooling. Please use responsibly. Click the link in the description for more info. What's up guys, welcome back to build log four of my custom water cooled build. I am super excited to announce that today I'm actually going to be putting this damn thing together. Uh, now before you get too excited, that doesn't mean the completed build is going to be ready by the end of this video. I'm still going to need to do some finishing touches like uh, the cable sleeving as well as adding in some LEDs potentially in the future. But you are going to be able to see me build the actual loop. I'm going to be filling it with that beautiful pink loop, uh, liquid and uh, we're going to get a, an overall look, our closest look at the finished build that we've had since the beginning of this build log. So, super exciting stuff. Uh, there are a couple little things I need to do before I start the build process, however, uh, including uh, flushing the radiators, just to get all the little bits and gunk out uh, that were left over from the manufacturing process, um, which is fairly simple to do. So once I'm done with that, we're gonna start building. Uh, there's a couple, a few little things, minor things that have happened since the last build log that I haven't documented yet. Uh, you might have saw, seen this on my Instagram, uh, but I did paint the corners, the little tabs here of the PCIe slots that uh, my video cards are going to be going into. I painted them black with uh, black spray paint, as well as this uh, SATA port right here, which used to be beige. It used to be the color of of uh, all the beige on, on the motherboard, but I spray painted that black as well. The only reason I did these three things is because they are going to be they are going to be standing out the most, and they will not be covered by any other components once the build is finished. And I didn't want that beige showing through too much, so that's why I kind of left the uh, the PCIe slot itself alone because you're not going to be able to see those once the video cards are installed anyway. Oh, also, I spray painted the PCI slots. Now, these are not the finished product. These are testers. Uh, I originally sprayed some primer on them, and it wasn't clear primer. It was actually dark. These used to be white PCI slots. I spray painted, I uh, coated them once or twice with some dark gray primer, which was not a good idea because it actually forced me to have to use several... Um, pink coats, color coats, more than I than I wanted to, and I kind of ended up with this purpley, you know, darker shade of pink that than I really wanted. So the other ones, my second batch, are drying in the um, drying in the garage right now. I just spray painted them about half an hour ago, and they're already looking a lot better because I did not use any primer this time around. I just spray painted straight onto the white slot, and they're already looking a lot better, uh, and they're definitely more true to our pink fuchsia color that we're trying to go for in the liquid, so my damn camera will focus. It's one thing I'm not a huge fan of on this camera. Autofocus could be much improved. Mother of God, mother of God. There we go, there we go. So now let me take you over to our uh, little flushing station. Remember kids, always flush. It's the courteous thing to do. Uh, take a look over here. You can see my 360 radiator is all good to go. Uh, it's ready for flushing. I've got a funnel here. Just stick that in there. Uh, I'm not gonna show you guys exactly how to do it step by step. step, by step day by day. But the basic procedure here is you get some distilled water. Make sure it's distilled. Don't just use regular tap water. That's a no-no. Uh, so I just picked this up at uh, Sprouts. You can get it at any pretty much grocery store or drugstore. This was a dollar for a gallon. So cheap stuff. Stock up on it so you don't run out. And you're just gonna fill it up there until your radiator is, I don't know, half to three quarters full and then you plug them up, either use some plugs or I usually just stick my thumbs in, into the holes, and then you just shake it vigorously for a while, and then you, you drain it. You let it all out into the sink or the bathtub or whatever, and uh, usually more often than not you'll see little bits and flakes coming out. I already flushed my 
240 radiator and you can't really see it was actually pretty clean to begin with you don't see much much gunk in there and a lot of it's probably just from the sink before I even started flushing um, but it is good procedure and protocol to do before because once you have the loop built uh, you don't want a little little bits of crud flying floating around in your in your system and that's gonna look really nasty and also potentially affect performance more importantly so uh, I'm gonna give this a couple flushes two to four flushes until everything looks good and nothing else is coming out and then we're gonna start building this thing so Brace yourselves, it's gonna be awesome. Here we go. been bled and uh, well let me take a look at it here there it is uh, the bleeding process was relatively simple I got through it okay hit a few snags but nothing too serious um, I guess I'll just dive right into the things I learned from this experience uh, first off and my buddy Jay from Jay's two cents helped me out with this quite a bit I texted him last night in a panic and he uh, put me at ease but apparently when I first bled this thing and I had powered it on it the, the fluid wasn't actually flowing through the loop. It was just kind of stagnant. I could see a little bit of trickling on this tube right here, but it wasn't actually getting full. And even the little air bubbles in, in this tube right here weren't moving at all. So I thought for a second that maybe my pump was defective and I almost had a heart attack. But Jay let me know that because I'm using a PWM type pump, um, they tend to spin at really, really low RPMs unless the cable, the, the four pin header, is plugged into a PWM header on your motherboard or something similar. So I had actually just had this pump wired to uh, an external power supply right there and nothing else was powered on. And apparently it was just spinning so slowly that it looked like it wasn't even working. So what I did was I just powered up the motherboard um, and then I uh, plugged in the, the cable into one of the PWM headers on that, that uh, saber tooth and fired it up and sure enough, everything was fine. So thank you, Jay. Thanks for saving my life. I owe you one, buddy. Apart from that, another thing that I learned in this whole experience is buy more fluid than you think you need. Uh, as you can see here, I hate you, autofocus. I hate you. As you can see here, I have not 
purchased enough fluid to fill my reservoir. And I guess this really applies to people with uh, multiple radiators in their system and uh, fairly large reservoirs like mine right here. Um, if you really want to get it filled up and get that nice clean aesthetic look, because obviously this doesn't look that great, uh, you might need more than one liter of, uh, of whatever fluid you're using. Uh, but obviously you can still run the loop just fine, it just won't look as nice. Uh, when it's half full or whatever. Uh, the other thing that I learned is, you know, never never underestimate expectations versus reality uh, when you're planning a, a custom loop like this. Because up until now, all of this, uh, this whole build has just been an image in my head. You know, I, I, and I'm not going to know, you're never going to know what it's going to look like until you actually build it. Um, and I'm not going to say that I hated it or anything, but I'm not necessarily in love with it as much as I thought I would be. And I think that's also having to do with uh, having uh, not having the sleeving in there. I think once I have some pink sleeving for the, uh, the video cards and the ATX cable, I think I'm going to like it a lot more. Also, once the Venturi fans, the three Venturi fans are up here on the 360 radiator, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, but also, like I said before, I think I'm going to get a straight fitting right here because I want to extend the tubing and I want to make it a little bit more curvaceous. It's just a little too straightforward uh, for me right there. And also I might get a, uh, a T connector instead of having um, one separate one for the drain and one for the outlet to the loop. I think I'm just going to combine it into one fitting, basically a splitter fitting. Um, and I think that'll look a lot cleaner. Additionally, do you hear that noise? You hear it? Listen, listen carefully. Where is it? Where is it coming from? Wait. Aha! The little the little mini fan on the Sabertooth X99 is noisy as hell. Um, so that's not gonna fly with me, but that's okay because Asus includes this little uh, this little shield right here that you can just swap out for the fan. And there you go, no more fan. And this also brings up a nice opportunity for some color theme modification as well, because when I was looking at this originally, after I had bl first bled the loop, I thought, you know, there's really a lot of pink towards the right side of the case, and not so much on the left. I tried my best with the uh, PCI slots, which turned out really nice. I'm actually really happy with how those turned out. Um, but there's just a little bit of pink lacking in this upper region uh, to the left of the case, towards the back. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I know I've been spray painting like a madman, but I think I'm gonna spray paint this pink, or at least try to, well, I'm not gonna try it. I'm gonna freaking do it, damn it. And I think that'll add just a little bit more pink in that uh, rather empty region. Uh, and I did also wanna mention that I am gonna try my hand at hardline tubing in this system in the future. Probably in the near future, actually, because uh, now that I've done the soft tubing, I'm like, okay, been there, done that. I kind of want to try hardline tubing. Um, like I said, I am not in love with, with the way the, the tubing looks in here, but I think that hardline tubing would really make it look pretty damn sweet and just have a lot cleaner lines altogether. And of course, it's a good learning experience, and you know, I might as well do it uh, sooner than later. But that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this build log, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, like I said, we've got a couple more of these before the system's fully ready to go. And uh, thank you all for, for staying tuned. So catch you guys in the next one. Please feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.